Hi there, and welcome to the second video in the series looking at vertical antennas and ground mounted vertical antennas in particular. Now, again, we're looking at efficiency, but today we're focusing on one of the two main aspects, which is radiation resistance. Now, if you remember what antenna efficiency is, it's effectively two main resistive elements. We've got radiation resistance, which is good resistance, and loss resistance, which is bad resistance. And we want to try and maximize the radiation resistance and lower the loss resistance. Both are measured in ohms. And what is radiation resistance? Well, it's basically the amount of applied power that is radiated from the antenna. So we want to keep our radiation resistance as high as possible to maximize the amount of power that we are radiating from the antenna. And it's largely determined by the physical length of the antenna, but can also be improved by some form of loading as well, if the antenna, the vertical, is particularly short. So how then do we calculate efficiency? This is the formula we looked at last time, if you remember. So efficiency is the radiation resistance divided by the radiation resistance plus the loss resistance times 100. And that gives us a percentage figure for efficiency. So we're focusing on radiation resistance today and how much the physical length of the vertical ground mounted antenna can affect the radiation resistance and therefore the efficiency of the antenna that you might want to use. Now, I've done a lot of research into this, and my main source of information is this. It's come from uh, Chapter 9 of ON4UN's work, his book on low-band DXing, written by that gentleman, uh, Uli Weiss, DJ2YA. And this is an excellent chapter in that particular book. So the first thing that uh, we need to look at is vertical antenna length and its radiation resistance, because different lengths of verticals, as a fraction of a wavelength, give you different amounts of radiation resistance. If you look along the bottom of the graph, you can see different lengths of verticals in relation to the wavelength or the band that you're particularly working on. So we, on the bottom left, we've got 0 0.05, that's 5% of the wavelength, all the way to the far side, where we've got one and a quarter wave. So for example, uh, the 0.05 is like having a two meter vertical, two meter long vertical running on 40 meters, and 1.25 is like having a 50 meter long vertical on 40 meters. So quite a spread of lengths there. Now, as you can see, certain lengths give you higher radiation resistance. So, for example, if we look across to 0 0.5 of a wavelength, we see we've got, well, a figure of around 1200 ohms, probably a bit more than that, really. But that gives us an idea of how much more radiation resistance we get for the half wave. And if you look across, we get other peaks at around a full wavelength long. So every half wave or thereabouts, a multiple of, we get higher radiation resistance. In between, therefore, we see peaks and troughs. So from the left hand side, we see a quarter wave gives us about 36 ohms. Uh, 0.37 is a 3 8 wave that gives us 210 ohms. Then we've got a peak of half wave and then it goes down again to a 5 8 at 175 ohms and so on. So every quarter wave, uh, well, starting off as a quarter wave, and then every half wave above that, so we've got a quarter wave is 36 ohms, three quarter waves, if you look across, is 80 ohms, one and a quarter wave is 90 ohms. So there's a pattern. Every half wavelength, we see a, a roughly a repeat of the radiation resistance. So some lengths gives us greater radiation resistance than others. So what does that all mean in terms of efficiency? Well, let's say, for example, we're looking at an antenna that has, on a particular band, that has eight ground-mounted quarter-wave radials. So, for example, if we're on 20 metres, we've got 40 metres worth of radials. Don't forget, each radial is ground-mounted. It doesn't have to be a tuned radial. But let's say the total amount of radials we've got connected to this vertical, this ground-mounted vertical, comes to a total of eight quarter-wave lengths worth of. So, for example, for 20 metres... That would be 40 metres worth of radials. For 40 metres, that would be 80 metres worth of radials and so on. OK, you can see, though, that in terms of efficiency, that we have peaks going towards where we have higher radiation resistance. So as a half wave, if you go right across, maybe halfway across, or just over halfway across, you can see 0 0.5 of a wavelength. And we can see there that with eight uh, quarter wavelengths worth of radials, ground radials, we've got a very high efficiency of well into the 90s. 
and also for a full wavelength too. Look, that's just, just a bit less. And in between, the three-quarter wave and the one and a quarter wave have very similar efficiencies in, a, in the 60s. The quarter wave is around 46%. And as we go down, we see that our efficiency drops away to around 2% when we have a very small uh, antenna there, one twentieth of a wavelength long. So we will be looking at radials in a future one, but we can see there that, um, that when we have longer verticals, we tend, in the grand scheme of things, to have a higher efficiency. And why is that? Well, if we go back to our uh, equation for efficiency, looking back at that equation again, if you've got a radiation resistance of, say, 1,200, and the loss resistance, which in this case would be something like about 40 ohms, I think, if you work that out, then the efficiency is basically 1,200 over 1,240 times 100. Well, that's nearly 100%. It's going to be well into the high 90s, which it would be for the, if we see there, the half wavelength figure. So that's why, you see, with a half wavelength, we have 1,200 ohms of radiation resistance. We've got 97% efficiency because the radiation resistance is so much more than the loss resistance. Let's look at a couple of examples then of typical antennas. Now, many people, not many, but some anyway, uh, run maybe a 29 foot vertical, that's 8.8 .8 meters long, up a fishing pole, and maybe put a 9 to 1 unun at the bottom, something like that. Now, we're not worried about the 9 to 1 unun today. We're purely looking at that length of wire. That's all it is. And it's likely efficiency on these different bands. We'll be covering things like matching the antenna, matching the vertical in uh, in future video. But in this case, just purely looking at the the length of wire. And also, by the way, we're presuming that this antenna on all bands has 100 metres of ground radials. OK, so, for example, for 80 metres, you can see that's in red there. And it's in red because effectively a 29 foot vertical on 80 metres is very inefficient. If you look on the left hand side, it is 0 0.12 of a wavelength long. That's pretty one eighth of a wavelength. And taking into account the amount of ground radials we've got, there's 100 metres of it. And taking into account the very small radiation resistance we have, because it's such a short antenna in relation to the band, it's only one eighth of a wavelength long, we've got an efficiency there of about 11%. All right, so that's basically 10 dB lost. So nearly enough, 90% of your power is gone. So if you're running 10 watts, for example, you're radiating about a watt. 100 watts, 10 watts, and so on. And on the right-hand side, I've compared it with a quarter wave with the same number of uh, radials for that band. So a quarter wave would be about 40% efficient. As we go down, we can see we go from red to yellow. Now, yellow means that, you know, ante both these antennas, the 29-foot vertical and the quarter wave, would both be roughly within a couple of dB of each other. In fact, for, on 40 metres, we're not far off being a quarter wave. Look, we're 0.22 of a wavelength long. So our efficiency is almost on the par with a quarter wave. It's only 7% down, which is nothing in terms of dB. So we're very close there. And in fact, once you see the antenna becoming longer than a quarter wave, we see the efficiency begin to really rise. So, for example, on 30 metres, it's about a third of a wavelength long, and we've got 76% efficiency because our radiation resistance is now climbing and is becoming much higher than any loss resistance for the amount of radials we've got on the ground. And it becomes appreciably more on 20 metres, where in fact the 29-foot uh, the vertical is more than 2 dB better than the, uh, than, than the quarter wave. And we're still stronger on those higher bands as well. So on those higher bands, if you look at the left-hand column, the antenna is becoming much longer as a fraction of a wavelength. It's uh, almost nine-tenths of a wavelength long on 10 metres, for example. And you can see the 20 metre uh, 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 band will be good in that antenna because it's basically on the left hand side, almost a half wavelength long. Remember how high the radiation resistance is on a half wavelength antenna. So it's, a, its efficiency is very, very good indeed. Another example is the 43 foot vertical, uh, 13 metres long. Very popular, especially in the States. Very popular antenna in America, ground mounted 43 foot vertical. Lots of people run them in this country as well. Uh, now, on 80 metres, we're a bit longer, so a bit higher as a, uh, a bit longer as a fraction of the wavelength. Not by much, though. We're still only 0.17 of a wavelength long, as you can see. And the efficiency is 19%, so we haven't really gained an awful lot. We're still half as efficient as the quarter wave. 40 metres, though, because we're now a third of a wavelength long, suddenly our efficiency is a lot higher, and it climbs 
a fair bit as well. For 30 metres, for example, we're now nearly a half wavelength on 30, so we're very good. And if you look down to 15 metres, we're also very good as well. Uh, we're basically a full wavelength long on 15 and 97% efficient. So it's very good on these higher bands in terms of efficiency. There are other things to take into account over the 43 foot vertical, which we'll look at in a future video when we look at um, the low angle of radiation performance for DX when your vertical becomes a certain length um, or a certain fraction of a wavelength long. So we need to look at that. But in terms of efficiency, once you climb to somewhere around a half wavelength or, or longer, you tend to get a very good uh, radiation resistance and therefore your efficiency becomes a lot better as an antenna. So there you go. That's efficiency in terms of radiation resistance and length of antenna. I suppose the biggest uh, lesson to learn from this, if we're taking lessons from it, is that when an antenna becomes a quarter wave or longer, it starts to climb quite markedly in terms of its efficiency. Any antenna which is, I would say, less than 0.2 of a wavelength long, so for example, eight meters long, an 8 meter long vertical on 40, a 4 meter long vertical on 20, I suppose a 16 meter long vertical on 80. And that's very hard to get a vertical up 16 meters, but I suppose if you've got a big tree or something, you could do that, or a very long pole. Um, once we've become uh, shorter than that sort of figure, then we start to see our efficiency begin to really suffer. So there you go. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is loss resistance. So we're going to look at ground loss resistance in, in more detail. And that becomes really the second main and second half in terms of efficiency. We've looked at radiation resistance, but the question we're going to ask ourselves in the next video is, what impact do radials have on verticals with different uh, or verticals of different lengths, which are ground mounted? So in other words, does adding more radials actually help all verticals of different lengths? And that's the next thing we're going to look at. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you like what you see, then subscribe. That'd be lovely. But join me again on the next one. And I uh, hope you enjoy your radios too. Bye-bye.